Entrepreneurship, what does that word really mean to you? For some, it could be the lifestyle and the luxuries that they've always wanted. For others, it could be the time that they got back. And you know, back in the day, it used to be, hey, they didn't want to work or they were lazy. But all in all, good things are always talked about. But what about the ugly side of entrepreneurship? The things that are not talked about? Come with us as we explore these things with 10 different individuals. Welcome to the ugly side of entrepreneurship. I'm here with Shariga Bogan who is the owner and proprietor of It's Pure Magic Designs. Can I talk now? Yes, you can talk now, man. Thank you. <laughs> but no, uh, uh, you're, you've been a serial entrepreneur. Um, talking to you and learning about all the different aspects of entrepreneurship and the different businesses that you've had. Uh, what, what was the first one? Um, timeless and Memorable Gifts. Okay. Then it was um, Fist of Cuffs. Then it was um, Not Another Cliche. Okay. Then it was, um, so I Am Shariga is the parent company of mm -hmm. Manifest That as well as um, It's Been Magic Designs. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was Faith is Fabulous. That was with the shoes. I think that covers all of them. Okay, so in your opinion, why so many different businesses? Because, you know, we're taught to max them out a business, right? Go hard for the business and get it to the point to where we break these different ceilings. Mm -hmm. um, so, so many of them because like there were like different times in my life, if that kind of makes sense. Okay. So, um, the first three, I was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then in my mind, being so young, I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to, because it was like candles mm -hmm. and um, this was before the shoes. Uh, it was like a whole bunch of stuff. And, mm -hmm. but I was thinking more of a crafting thing. Mm -hmm. Then, but with me making that much money mm -hmm. and, and that's not even including like, you know, whatever. Um, I just kind of felt like I was never going to make that amount of money working for myself. So. I didn't really pursue those as much as I did, but still selling, you have to have a business license and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's how I remember those. But then when I got my bachelor's, um, while I was getting my bachelor's, I actually lost that job mm -hmm. that I made all the money for. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to fall back on something. So I fell back on, you know, my hands and mm -hmm. that made a lot of money as well. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I could have, there could have been other ways I could have kept it going mm -hmm. because that's the first time that I ever made that much money, mm -hmm. I think it was like $65,000 is how much I made that year. Mm -hmm. And, and which was, business was that? That was the shoes. Okay, so that was the shoes. So you had custom design shoes. Mm -hmm. You made 65000 in a year, mm -hmm. right? And that was profit. And that was profit. Mm -hmm. So you actually made more than sixty-five. dollars mm -hmm. You profited sixty-five. dollars Yep. Um, so I'm thinking you probably had a good, what, 40, 50% profit margin? I would probably say that. Okay, so you in in essence, you probably made around one hundred thirty thousand um, dollars. If I can look at my taxes, I can go back to my taxes and I can show you because that was the first time I ever filed taxes mm -hmm. um, with the business, and that's mm -hmm. how I knew how much I made. Because mm -hmm. because with me, I'm just buying supplies mm -hmm. and I'm not really paying attention until it was time for me to file taxes. Mm -hmm. And because when when it comes to Etsy, if you make over a certain amount, they make you file taxes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I made that much money. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, so I guess fear set in, right? Um, yeah, definitely. Like, because you could have, I could have kept going. You kept, you could have kept going in. You could have expanded, but I think you know what I'm saying. With you not probably having a support system and not having anyone to like really mentor you, to knowing that you know what I'm saying. Okay, so the whole point of a business, right, mm -hmm. is to fulfill a need that's not in the market and to grow. Okay. I agree. I agree with that. Okay. That means each year you got to grow. So that means you have yeah. to do things to feed the business, but then also keep hitting higher income threshold points. Yeah, and by that time though, I was already doing shoes for like two years. Mm -hmm. So that was that was my second year. So I have there was growth. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, but then I also was graduating college too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna use this degree and then I'll make as much money with my degree. Then I end up stopping the shoes, mm -hmm. end up working for a company probably a couple months later. Mm -hmm. And I literally quit that company like not even six months after that. Okay, so is it fair to say that the traditional way of being raised or the look upon education, because your degree was in... Business. Okay, business. Mm -hmm. So you were in the, the wheelhouse or the mindset of, okay, this business degree is going to pay me like my own company. I wasn't looking at it like that. I was like, this business degree is going to get me that corporate position. But like, why fall upon that when you've already had like, you know, proof of concept with this whole company? Like, you know, what was it? Because... A steady paycheck. Okay, and the unknown. I get that. So that was a, that's a stumbling block. Um, yeah, I mean, like when you have a whole bunch of kids and mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you're going to be able to feed them kids, mm -hmm. that they're going to have everything they need. And at the mm -hmm. time I was trying to send my kids to private school. Mm -hmm. So I needed to make sure that I had what I needed to get there. Mm -hmm. And when the shoes had took like a, it didn't take a downfall because I left at the peak. I literally mm -hmm. cut it off at the peak. Mm -hmm. um, but with me, you know, not knowing the legality of it mm -hmm. and just you know letting these big corporations like scare me off mm -hmm. i was just like okay well yeah i can have it it's mm -hmm. cool i got my degree now so i'm mm -hmm. gonna make you know corporate money yeah and that it it didn't work out that way okay. oh, yeah, so, yes, here. It's, it's probably one of them ghosts that was mm -hmm. in the bathroom mm -hmm. get it get it, get it. Mm -hmm. Don't pull my wig off. No, no, I want y'all to pull your wig off. Okay. <laughs> so, so it comes hard enough. Okay, so then your next business, right, right after shoes, is the manifest that. The manifesting. Mm -hmm. And how well did you do in that business? Um, so I was doing that business while I was also working. Mm -hmm. So it was, and it took a lot of my time too, mm -hmm. because I was working. I was a registrar at a school, at a private school, mm -hmm. and um. You know, although I don't have to like clock in and it was a salary based job, mm -hmm. it was a took a lot of my time and I was it took a lot of mental mm -hmm. um from me and it, it it did good. It did good for where it was at, but um it got scary. So what what was scary in particular? My customers. <laughs> as far as like them expecting me because I it was based on spirituality. It was based on okay, being so your the greatest version more than just a transaction thing it was more it was real deeper connection with your customers yeah it was it was it was um trying to get them to be their greatest version mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that me trying to help somebody become their greatest version while i'm still trying to become my greatest version mm -hmm. was um this is kind of hard because um people got issues mm -hmm. and i felt more like a therapist and a counselor mm -hmm. than i did i was just selling the products and the services because mm -hmm. there are some companies where you you are mm -hmm. being their therapist and a counselor it wasn't really a buffer oh my god no it was it was kind of like hey you said you were going to help me mm -hmm. help me get this man to love me and i'm like i i can't mm -hmm. so uh, and that also affected my spirituality because i'm starting to look at people differently mm -hmm. i'm starting to look at them like um you know, it's people are. Can I say this on camera? People are what? Fucked up. Yeah, no, people are. There's a um, lot of fucked up people in the world, mm -hmm. and I couldn't handle that. That was, a, I'm be yeah. completely honest, it was a lot of pressure for me mm -hmm. to see how messed up people were mm -hmm. and some of the things that they were willing to do to get what they want. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is not what this company was about. This mm -hmm. company was for you to become your greatest version, mm -hmm. not to manipulate people or get people to do things mm -hmm. for you or. You know, it, it, it was just not like that. So that company, basically the audience received it differently than what you wanted to Than what I perceived it. it. Yeah, than when right. I initially presented it yes, to people yeah. as. Yeah. So there was a breakdown in communication and wires got crossed. Um, I went to a huge depression because, depression because of that. Like seriously, I started mm -hmm. to challenge or question mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. based on how people thought I was because mm -hmm. that's another thing when it comes to like social media and stuff mm -hmm. you got to be you have to have a solid foundation because yeah. if you don't they people will um tailor you into what they want you to be mm -hmm. and if you don't know who you are you can lose yourself and I felt like I was losing myself in that mm -hmm. world and that ain't what I wanted mm 
Okay, so then you leave that business alone, the inspiration, or no, manifestation business, and then the next one is the balloon? The yes, design. but if you kind of look at it, it's mm -hmm. about still bringing that positivity mm -hmm. and that it's not more manifesting, but mm -hmm. it's still bringing that positive energy into mm -hmm. like what I do now. Mm -hmm. So putting a smile on somebody's face and mm -hmm. brightening up their day and helping, you know, their events, you know, mm -hmm. look beautiful and timeless. Um, so it kind of goes hand in hand because when people meet me, I'm just so bubbly and I'm like, yeah, we're going to make this amazing. And mm -hmm. when they smile, I smile. Mm -hmm. That's how I want to manifest to be. Mm -hmm. and it just didn't turn out that way. But yeah. Okay. Balloons, right? Starting the balloons and one people seeing, they can see that, they can perceive that business as more of a disposable income type of situation, right? Where, yeah, I guess. Um, you know, see the value in it. So getting your first client and all that, how was that process? The first client I ever got me in the balloon business, mm -hmm. it was because my coworker, because I was still working at the school. Okay. My coworker went to Party City to get some supplies that we needed for an event. And this girl was standing in line and she was like, she asked Party City, could they blow these balloons up for her? Mm -hmm. And they was like, no, ma'am, we don't do that. Because she mm -hmm. brought her balloons in from like, I don't know, Amazon or something. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, we don't do that. So my, I literally the day before I told my coworker, I was like, I want to do this for a living. Mm -hmm. And she told the girl, she was like, hey, my coworker does this. This mm -hmm. is what she does. I don't even, I ain't even do balloons. I ain't mm -hmm. not a balloon business. Mm -hmm. And she gave her my information and that was my first client. Okay, so how long before that first client to the second client? Shoot. I don't know. Probably within a couple of weeks. Okay, so what was the mind process then that you're going through? You get the first client, you feel their invigoration of, okay, I just got paid to do this or whatever. I'm trying to get the second one. Was there any doubts, any insecurities that had set in? No, nope, not, not one. So you just I, I them through? I, not one, cause my like I told you before, everything mm -hmm. I touch turns to gold. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that it is. So I knew that it was gonna be something big, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just like the balloons. I also did like the yard cards. So I invested mm -hmm. like thousands of dollars mm -hmm. into me buying these yard cards because mm -hmm. you know yard cards was big because of COVID and mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm like I'm gonna capitalize on this, mm -hmm. and it literally it blew up so big mm -hmm. to the point where I was like, yeah, this is. This is it. This is what I want to do. Okay, so you have that right. Mm -hmm. You have the you have the trajectory, or you have the synergy and everything moving forward at that point, right? Mm -hmm. You said it's blowing up to be big. Mm -hmm. Why are you still at that point hanging on to corporate? Well, you have to understand. Too, so I left my job. Mm -hmm. I put in my you know months notice, and I said, hey, you know, I'm gonna leave. Mm -hmm. Blah blah. But mind you, I'm in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So this is word of mouth. This is people, you know, my friends, and they all know that I do good work. Mm -hmm. But I'm in Georgia now, mm -hmm. and I don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, I'm like, okay, I need a job. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, most people only deal with people that they know. Yeah. It's very rare that, you know, you get somebody and say, oh, yeah, you know, who is this person? So, and I wasn't mm -hmm. on Google then. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of hard for me. I'm advertising like on Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. So I had to find me a job because I needed to help with this move that we just made. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but once I realized it don't matter if I'm working for somebody else, or I'm still going to end up in the same damn spot. Like mm -hmm. how you say it. In the long run, no matter what company I work for, I'm going to get bored with it and I'm mm -hmm. always going to be an entrepreneur. I'm always going to be an entrepreneur. So why not just this mm -hmm. time, just do it and don't stop. Because mm -hmm. like I said, I've, I've never actually failed at a business. Mm -hmm. I just stopped because it became too much. It was either too mm -hmm. many clients or mm -hmm. it was I was missing my family. Mm -hmm. or But it never stopped because I wasn't getting clients. Mm -hmm. It just kept going well would you say that you uh, didn't meet the potential that those businesses had though hold on now wait huh <laughs> 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 wait, wait hold on Did, i didn't meet in my own business my own company yeah. or okay so you had to you had a shoot like okay so listening to your business journey right mm -hmm. i'm seeing all these like you could have, I, I think the shoe business was a million dollar business it was minimum um but again you relying on okay i'm getting this education so you're relying on what people have we we've, we've we've been bred and taught like go to school mm -hmm. get a good job 
You know what I'm saying? We're not taught, okay, you can learn you can learn some type of skill set, you can start a business. I've, I've taught all of my children, you, when you graduate from high school, mm -hmm. you either go to college, or if you don't want to, you start a business. That's true. Some of them are electing to start businesses, and they've already expressed that to me. Um, That's and, just scary, though. Well, okay, I get that part, right? Because at one point, I was scared, but mm -hmm. I'm not scared anymore, no matter what I do, right? Um, so I don't, I haven't experienced fear in a business in over decades or so. Probably, uh, I mean, you're seasoned though. I, I, I think, yes. And that's why I can say like from the perspective of like the potential, right? Your shoe business was easily a million dollar business. Um, now I get the uh, manifestation or whatever, because that's still... That's like a, a tarot card reading, a palm reading. Mm -hmm. Not saying that it's the same thing, but it, it involves, invokes that type of connection. Those type of businesses invo invoke, like, you know what I'm saying, that type of personal connection. So people mm -hmm. always want to have that type of connection. And the only way to really scale those type of businesses is they want to get higher type of clientele where you're making more money. Um, because we, we uh, that's really the only way, unless you're going to offer some type of product or service that's already like pre-recorded or uh, something like that to where people can still connect to you through video and all that or whatever and learn the trainings um and then with the balloons and designs and the yard signs and stuff mm -hmm. now that one you can scale but you got to start bringing in folks and you have to trust the process of you're going to be able to train someone who will do it not 1000 percent like you would mm -hmm. but something that you're uh acceptable Right, because your customers determine the value, not you. Um, so you I would can, definitely agree with that. You can do something to where you know, you know, you can do more, but if they're ecstatic about what you did do, then that's the that's the bar, and you don't have to go over that. You can get someone to hit that marker as far as you know training it's just going through the process of finding the right well, people. Here's the thing. So with all my businesses, and because I've worked with my hands for so long. I now realize that my hands are starting to give up on me. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, like, you see this? Mm -hmm. This is just me constantly doing rep like shoes. Mm -hmm. The constant repetition of mm -hmm. shoes and my hands just moving like this over mm -hmm. and over and over to the point where I don't know how long I have use of my hands the way that I do. So eventually mm -hmm. I will have to train people to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I will get there, but it's just me not constantly switching over from this company this company this company it's mm -hmm. just making sure that if this is the one i'm going to devote my time to mm -hmm. um and like this is disposable income so right now what i'm also working on is i don't want to get away from residential and i'm going to go towards corporate because mm -hmm. that's where the money is to be mm -hmm. honest yeah um so it's me giving my all with all of my degrees with all of the experience i've had with my amazing customer service because mm -hmm. <laughs> this right here is mm -hmm. a sellable potential too mm -hmm. but um it's now time for me to take all of that and just put it into this one company and without stopping without giving up mm -hmm. because that's what i do I, i'm gonna I'm give up i'm like oh that company's over there is paying me thousands of dollars mm -hmm. let me go there mm -hmm. um and instead of investing in my own company yeah and you settled i do settle all yeah. the time yeah but, but you're I, not, you're I can't not, do it no more yeah you can't do it no more so and that's and that's what this whole thing is about right showing people like that's the other side of entrepreneurship is the uncertainty it's the switching, you know what I'm saying? And not, you know, yeah. staying in a particular rope because they say you're an overnight success after 10 years of doing something, right? Um, that's how it's perceived. And it's hard to get to that 10 year marker. It is. It a is. I people, mean, there are times where, you know, with, with any business, like when, when I first moved here and I didn't have like the job or whatever, the, the clients and stuff. And I'm like, how in the hell am I gonna feed? And at the time, I just had my five year old. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how am I gonna? It's expensive here. How mm -hmm. am I gonna feed my kid? Mm -hmm. How am I gonna do this? And I would just cry and cry and cry. And I'm like, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta find a job. Mm -hmm. and that was the first thing. It wasn't. I need to advertise on Google. It wasn't. I need to contact corporate. It was. I need to find a job. That was the first thing I did. And I found the job. And then I'm not happy mm -hmm. because now my business is suffering. People are calling me. Mm -hmm. I can't answer the phone call because I'm mm -hmm. on the phone for them. Mm -hmm. And that became hard for me. But it wasn't until like I literally stopped taking calls for them and taking calls for myself 
these clients, like my, my clients literally just want to hear my voice. They want to know I'm real. Mm -hmm. If this person online, you know, with all these pictures and all this stuff, is she real? Mm -hmm. I answer my phone. I booked another client. Mm -hmm. I answered again. I booked another client. Mm -hmm. I devote my time to TikTok. So mm -hmm. my time is valuable. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm realizing now. Mm -hmm. And I'm either going to devote my time to them mm -hmm. or I'm going to invest my time into my company. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm choosing to do now. Even with me being here, you know, this is this is an investment to my company. Mm -hmm. um, from the time, like, I, I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And the first thing I do is I'm going online and I'm advertising mm -hmm. on social media. I'm on Nextdoor. I'm on mm -hmm. Facebook Marketplace. I go to bed at 10 o'clock. I'm not allowed to take naps during the day because I feel like while I'm napping, somebody else is getting the client that I should have been getting. So well, I don't. Once you get, okay, well, once you hit a certain threshold or whatever. You yeah, know, no, I, I do not allow should, myself to nap. Well, I'm, I'm saying like, okay, I get that because you're grinding. You're in grind mode. I right? am in grind mode. So, yeah. After a grind mode, there's another mode. Ah, maybe I can rest in. Yeah, there will. No, no, no. I'm saying you need to, because you're gonna burn yourself out. That's and like that's you know. What you don't want to do. Well, I did. I took a nap yesterday because mm -hmm. I had all those events that was back to back to back. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did. I took a four hour nap yesterday, and it mm -hmm. was the best sleep I ever had. Mm -hmm. I woke up for about two hours, and then I went back to sleep. Mm -hmm. But if I feel like I don't deserve a nap, I'm not gonna get a nap. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, I do not take naps. I don't. And I'm always, you know, trying to figure out other ways to do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I spend 90% of my time on a computer. Mm -hmm. And then that 10%, I'm out in the field and I'm working or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I have the tools that I need that mm -hmm. I feel like I can be bigger than what I am. Mm -hmm. Because I have knowledge that most, there are some people out here that just do balloons. Mm -hmm. They don't do their own social media. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, do their website. They don't look mm -hmm. at algorithms. They mm -hmm. don't know about SEOs. They don't mm -hmm. know anything. It's just me doing balloons mm -hmm. me i know all of it and mm -hmm. it's kind of how do i stretch myself to build my company into this empire mm -hmm. with all this knowledge that i have it is mm -hmm. a lot and it is tiring but mm -hmm. it's gonna be worth it i can mm -hmm. feel it no you're gonna get there I um i do tell people like you know you can get, you can easily get to a hundred thousand a year with a business the issue comes in is when you're trying to hit 200 and get that you know quarter million and whatever you didn't have to start uh, thinking more like a company as an organization than as a, just an individual inside of your business. Mm -hmm. um, because that requires, you know, having other people and um, having them do tasks that you rely on them to do efficiently and effectively um, with the name that you've built up. But that's the only way to hit those thresholds. You're not going to sit there and just, like, I've seen some of these people, like, on Instagram and stuff, whatever, post where they got, like, a million dollars in sales and all that. I'm like, it's not just you though. You're posting and taking the credit, which is fine, but there's a there's a whole team behind you because I know what a million dollars in a company in a year looks like. Yeah. And I know how much work that is, regardless of what it is. Um, and it doesn't come easy like that. But I wish it did. Yeah, well, you know, anything that comes too easy falls apart. But um for one more time for the camera and for everyone who's gonna be watching this series. Let them know, but then um, about you know how to contact and stuff. But I want you to impart what is the one thing that you've learned that you can that you apply now to business that was like you know something that you know it shook you up or it was a pitfall or the lesson in that. Hmm. I would say the the biggest thing I've learned is to just not give up. And don't let like fear set in because fear like what fear stands for is um, what they say false evidence appearing real mm -hmm. so it's things that we tell ourselves it's like oh I'm not gonna be able to make that mm -hmm. or no I'm not gonna get those clients or no I'm not gonna do that and I listen to a ton of motivational videos like mm -hmm. every single one you can think of I probably listen to and it's one thing that they always say is don't let fear set in mm -hmm. keep god first mm -hmm. but don't let fear set in because that's all you fear is us mm -hmm. it's not what we you know necessarily been told is what we're telling ourselves so as long as you don't let fear set in and you mm -hmm. just keep going even though it don't look like what you think it's supposed to look like there are things that are working in the background for you and you just have to keep that faith that everything will work out fine and I think that's probably where I'm at now. It's just relying on my faith and relying on my God to, you know, make moves for me. Because it does apply action. This is my thing. What is faith? 
Like we say faith all the time. Mm -hmm. What is your definition of faith? If it's um, what no the work that you put towards something. Um, it's a discipline. It's like you said, the action and wanting to achieve that particular goal. Well, that's part of faith. Mm -hmm. So faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so it's yeah, things that yeah. you hope for, the things that you wish for, the things mm -hmm. that you want to happen. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that you need in any business. Mm -hmm. But then the second thing is you got to have action. Mm -hmm. This is all biblical stuff. It's all mm -hmm. in the Bible. So the Bible basically says if you believe it, mm -hmm. you can have it. But you also got to do something to mm -hmm. it. So faith without works is what? Dead. Mm -hmm. You have to have it. So if you have those two components, any company will work out. Yeah. You got to believe that it will, and then you have to show action. You have to move as if it is working already. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I've always had issues with, but it's also one of the things that's pushing me forward and being my motivation to keep going is mm -hmm. not to rely on that fear, but just look and know that it'll happen as long as I want it to. Mm -hmm. And that's good to know. Bam! That's it right there. Yeah. Okay. One more time <laughs> as far as name, company. So my name is Sharika. Boken, and the name of my company is It's Pure Magic Designs, and um, you can find me on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram. You can go to my website at www.itspuremagicdesigns.com, and that is it. And you can call me; we can be friends and stuff because I'm very personable. Beyonce, little sister. I am younger than Beyonce, by the way. I am. I'm older than Solange, but I'm. Yeah, I'm sorry.